What's up guys, Nuance Bro checking in, and today we're going to be talking about a suspect behind an attempted assassination of a Louisville mayoral candidate. So you might be asking yourself, why talk about a random mayoral candidate in Kentucky who got shot but didn't even really get hit or whatever? What's the big story behind that? Well, it's the suspect who's really the interesting one here. So if you don't already know, on Monday, February 14th, a man walked into the mayoral candidate's office in Louisville, Kentucky and began firing shots, which you can see covered here in this story from WLKY. And the mayoral candidate is Craig Greenberg, a Democrat, and you can see him here being escorted by police. And after the shooting, he issued a statement to the media. I'll play some of it here, describing the events that unfolded. First, I am blessed. My team is blessed. No one was physically injured today. This morning, I was gathered for a brief meeting with my campaign team four of my incredible teammates in our campaign office. A man walked into our office. When we greeted him, he pulled out a gun, aimed directly at me, and began shooting. The individual closest to the door managed to bravely get the door shut. We barricaded the door, and the suspect fled. Let me say again that all of us are blessed, and I'm blessed to be standing here today with you. Despite one bullet coming so close that it grazed my sweater and my shirt, no one was physically harmed, and we're extraordinarily grateful for our safety. So it appears Mr. Greenberg is quite lucky, only getting grazed on the fabric of his sweater on his shoulder, despite the suspect aiming directly at him in the words of Mr. Greenberg. But let's get into who this suspect is because it gets pretty interesting. So the suspect is Quintez Brown. He's described as an activist here in this New York Post article. Here you can see him in the orange jumpsuit. But this isn't just any activist. No, no, no. This was the activist. This guy was propped up by some of the biggest names in America. For example, you can see him here in a picture with Reverend Al Sharpton. Here you can see him getting a shout out by the current candidate for Senate for the Democrats in Kentucky, Charles Booker. This is actually from when Quintez went missing for a few weeks last year and being described in the tweet as a brilliant young scholar. Now these might seem like nobody names to you, but let's go to the big kahuna coming up. Barack Obama, here you can see on the right Quintez in a picture with Barack Obama, seeing better times on the right as opposed to the left. And this isn't just any picture he's taking with the former president. President. Barack Obama actually has this thing called Rising Faces, where his organization highlights many rising faces in the black community, young people. You can see Quintez Brown of Louisville, Kentucky, was one of the highlighted profiles on his website back in 2019. But I think the most ironic of all is that Quintez was a big supporter of gun control. I'm not kidding. Here you can see Quintez in 2018 at the March for Our Lives rally in Washington, D.C. This was the major gun control rally, which, by the way, I covered. If you want to see that video right here, you can go see that somewhere somewhere up here. But he was on Joy Reid's show on MSNBC as one of the featured guests. Let's see what he says here. Well, I want you to know that, you know, we are here and we want, we want common sense gun reform. And if you're not going to give us that, then we're going to get everyone out here to vote and we're going to vote you out of office. So if you want to keep your job, yeah. then, you know, give us what we not what we want, but what we need, what humans need. We need yeah. common sense gun reform. Get rid of assault rifles. Come on. Like, yeah, when you guys we do have some very inflexible congressmen. So maybe we won't get gun reform like the next day. But nonviolent direct action takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. So what it, one thing that we can do is get people out here voting, because even if we don't get gun reform, we're going to vote the people in office out and yeah. we're going to vote people who want gun reform who care about us we're yeah. going to put them in office so isn't that wonderful non-violent direct action it seems like uh the action he took directly was quite violent itself but to be fair this was a little over three years ago so maybe he's not as big of a fan of the non-violent direct action tactic anymore but it is peculiar because over a year later he was advocating against school resource officers in schools there's a sense of feeling unsafe when there comes to an officer in uniform, just because of, you know, what we see in the media and what we've experienced in our everyday lives. Quintez um, Brown works with Black Lives Matter and graduated from JCPS last year. You know, I know what it's like to be a black student in these schools, and I know uh, how my peers feel and how my peers feel about safety and so forth. But however, that's not the same for every single person. By the way, that interview happened a month after an 18 year old who was suspended from a high school brought a loaded revolver with 50 rounds of ammunition 
in his front pockets. But luckily, a school resource officer had spotted him and stopped him. So now that we've been over some of the history of Quintez Brown, I think it's important to go into some of the reaction to what happened by members of the community, people in Black Lives Matter, the organization he was affiliated with, and others who are friends of his or ideological comrades or bedfellows, whatever you want to call them, as well as some of Quintez's more recent beliefs. So one of the reactions came from Shamika Parrish Wright. And as you can see from her post with hashtag Shamika for mayor, she's actually running against the man who was shot right here, Craig Greenberg. Here she is right below him in the picture that she posted. And here's what she says. Hashtag lunchtime post PSA. Never will my story read, Shamika gave up on the people of Louisville. I am not here to play the same old political games that have gotten us nowhere. We will hashtag keep going. I am where I worked hard to be and hashtag Shamika for mayor is a movement for real change. Keep in mind, she's posting this after Quintez shot her opponent. So she posts that picture we just took a look at. Next picture is shout out to whoever taking care of my name when I'm not in the room. May your inbox be clean, your meetings short, and your days productive. And then the last picture is of Quintez Brown. So she's making this about herself. She's clearly on Quintez's side here. Very strange. Again, this is someone running for mayor against the person who just got shot. Both Democrats, by the way. We go to her next tweet in the thread where she says, I'm still the most qualified listening and bridge building candidate for Lou Mayer we have. I'm not running from anything I had to be in our city and you shouldn't either. We got serious issues, poverty, mental health, and substance abuse that hit every neighbor and city in Jefferson County. So for some reason, she's still talking about herself. The next tweet in the thread, she says, nothing happens without partnership and genuine interest. I want those impacted most to help us make the decisions. Here is what I shared with reporters last night. Quote, I think it's messed up that as soon as I turn my phone back on and go to Twitter, one of Brianna Taylor's killers naming a suspect and tagging me, sad face? How would he know that info so soon? It's a tragedy all around. I hoped the allegations were not true. Hashtag LMPD booked me and hundreds of other people on bogus charges, so we all have to wait and see where this all goes. So it seems like she's hinting that this might not even be the case because she doesn't trust the police. Maybe she thinks this is a bogus charge. Finally, she does end up saying, thank God Craig Greenberg and his team are okay. I don't know what could create such conflict between someone running for mayor and someone running for Metro Council, which by that she means Craig Greenberg. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but Quintez Brown was running for council. Metro Council in Louisville, if you can believe it. Now, of course, Quintez Brown was arrested by the police. He was brought before a judge where the bail was initially set at $75,000, but there was a request to raise it and it was raised to $100,000. But here's where it gets amazing. Quintez was able to post bond. So remember how I said this incident took place February 14th, where he shot at Craig Greenberg? Well, two days later, two Days later, after an attempted assassination of a mayoral candidate, Brown was released on February 16th after Louisville Community Bail Fund posted a $100,000 bond. There are reports that the Louisville Community Bail Fund is affiliated with Black Lives Matter, which by the way, this isn't even denied from anything that I've seen. For example, you can see from the Black Lives Matter Louisville page themselves. In response to someone saying that they've got mixed feelings about Brown's release, Black Lives Matter Louisville's Twitter page says, we should do away with jail altogether and fund the necessary preventative measures folks beg Louisville mayor budget every year. Totally sane response to say we should do away with jail altogether. And in response to that, somebody replied, lol, that rich coming from an organization that supports someone who just shot at a governmental employee. And the response that Black Lives Matter Louisville had was candidate. They had to correct them from saying governmental employee with candidate. Excuse me, dear sir. The person we support did not shoot at a governmental employee. It was a candidate. It's pretty unbelievable. I know. So in response to that, somebody did a quote mocking them saying, actually, the guy we bailed out only shot at a candidate, not a government official, is truly an incredible take. And again, Black Lives Matter Louisville, for whatever reason, keeps digging the grave 
quote tweeting that saying, the guy we bailed out needed support as the candidate said, which by the way, the candidate that they're referencing does not support that the person who just tried to assassinate him was released two days later. As you can see here from the Louisville Courier Journal, Craig Greenberg joins chorus of criticism over jail release of Quintez Brown in shooting. It is nearly impossible to believe that someone can attempt murder on Monday and walk out of jail on Wednesday, said Greenberg, who'd previously been hesitant to talk about whether the $100,000 bond amount for Brown was appropriate. If someone is struggling with a mental illness and is in custody, they should be evaluated and treated in custody. Sadly, like others who suffer from a broken system, my my team and family have been traumatized again by this news. By the way, fun thing to note, the Courier Journal is actually the same outlet that gave an internship to Quintez Brown. Yes, he literally wrote articles and was a columnist with the Courier Journal. They gave this kid all the opportunities in the world. And what does he do? He goes out and tries to kill a mayoral candidate. By the way, let's add one more tweet from Black Lives Matter Louisville in there. So in response to someone saying, bailing out potential murderers now, are we? Thought your movement represented something else. They said, the movement has also been about abolishing the 13th Amendment. You know, enslaving people for profit. Now I know you might be thinking, wait, 13th Amendment, isn't that the amendment that abolished slavery in the United States? <laughs> How adorable. You still believe in what the Constitution actually says. No, 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 no. We're living in conspiracy land. We live in crazy land. This is where the 13th Amendment, if you read it, oh, there's a, there's a nefarious exception in there that if you're in prison, you can be enslaved. I'm not joking. This is actually a conspiracy that they believe that it's like, oh, the 13th Amendment was actually not about abolishing slavery, but by changing slavery into the criminal justice system and making them slaves in prison or something like that. There's a whole Netflix documentary called 13th About It, which is a load of horse crap. I don't know. Maybe I've been thinking about maybe doing a debunking of that, but I don't know. You guys can let me know if you want me to do that. I, I don't know if I'll do it. Whatever. Uh, let's move on. Here you can see Rachel Droz TV covering the $100,000 cashier's check that had been officially given to the clerk's office by the Louisville Community Bail Fund for Quintez Brown's release, which by the way, you can see this activist here who's handing over the check has a free Angela shirt on. If you don't know who Angela is, it refers to Angela Davis. Now, if you don't know, Angela Davis is a radical communist who at one point was wanted by the FBI on murder and kidnapping charges. If I remember correctly, it involved her like giving guns to these people that took over a courtroom and shot at police and took hostages and things like that. Anyways, we're getting a little bit technical here, but with the trial, they basically did really good at jury selection and you know, a heavily biased area and things like that. And she was able to get off scot-free, but you know, she was also a recipient of the Soviet Union's Lenin Peace Prize. You know, because they like her because she's a communist. So terrible person, radical, racist, bad person that this organization supports. They wear publicly. They want the media to capture their support of someone like Angela Davis. Speaking of supporting radicals, this is from Quintez's Instagram, Tez for Liberation, where he says a very important quote for you to read today, which says, people get used to anything. The less you think about your oppression, the more your tolerance for it grows. After a while, people just think oppression is the normal state of things, but to become free, you have to be acutely aware of being a slave. This comes from Asada Shakur. Now, if you don't know who Asada Shakur is, maybe Quintez took some inspiration from this individual because Asada Shakur is a convicted murderer herself. As you can see here from her Wikipedia page, she's a former member of the Black Liberation Army who was convicted in the first degree murder of state trooper Werner Forster during a shootout on the New Jersey Turnpike in 1973. And she's wanted by the FBI and there is a $2 million reward for her apprehension. You see, she was arrested, convicted, went to prison, escaped prison, and now has political asylum in Cuba, where she still resides today. A cop killer that Tez for Liberation, Quintez Brown, takes inspiration from. 
Here's another post from Quintez Brown on his Instagram, posting something from the Lion of Judah Armed Forces, where it talks about unlearn the lies, rebirth the mind, bring change to the chosen nation. Now, in a piece from the Daily Beast, they talk about this post, where they call it a gun-toting group whose leadership has voiced ideas similar to those of the Black Hebrew Israelite movement, which holds an anti-Semitic ideology that Black Americans, not Jewish people, are the true descendants of the biblical Hebrews. Also, adherents of the Black Hebrew Israelite movement were charged with murdering four Jewish people at a kosher supermarket in Jersey City in 2019. These folks right here. A local spokesman for the Lions of Judah Armed Forces told the Daily Beast he first met with Brown last Thursday, though he said the accused never became a member of the group. He affirmed the organization's Black Hebrew Israelite beliefs, but maintained they did not endorse the attack or have any foreknowledge of Brown's plans. So it's interesting. Quintez Brown is posting radical black ideology. In fact, if we look earlier in this article, we can see his Twitter bio of all things said, quote, we have one scientific and correct solution, Pan-Africanism, the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. Now, it's interesting to note that he's a radical socialist, quoting people like Asada Shakur, who killed cops. He's making posts endorsing the Lion of Judah Armed Forces, which is a black Hebrew Israelite movement. He's expressing very similar ideas to these groups and Again, the Black Hebrew Israelite movement is considered a hate group that is deeply anti-Semitic, and the candidate that he shot at happened to be a Jewish American. Now, obviously, we can't definitively say at this moment exactly what the motivation was, but there are some hints at certain ideologies and certain circumstances at hand that might lead one to believe this could be a potential motivation. But I have to highlight one particular media outlet that had probably the most egregious coverage of this you could possibly imagine. And that is the Las Vegas Sun. Escalating hateful rhetoric leads nation down a dark, chaotic path. A terrifying incident in Louisville, Kentucky this week revealed the dangers of the talk coming from the right about civil war and political violence. Yeah, you heard that right. The dangers of the talk from the right about civil war and political violence. Did you see anything right wing from Quintez Brown? Is that what you saw? You saw right wing uh, talk that was going on there? Now, I think it's important to go to the early version of this that was posted by the Las Vegas Sun so you can see the difference between the earlier version and the latter version because they really didn't change much. In this sentence in particular, while there's been no indication yet that the activist has ties to any right-wing organizations, the shooting comes amid a rise in threats against politicians fueled by increasingly violent rhetoric coming from extremist Republicans. Keep in mind, this is after they learned who the suspect was. It was already widely publicized and well known that this individual had ties to Black Lives Matter and all that stuff. I mean, for God's sakes, you look at the guy, he's got pictures with Barack Obama, he's been on Joy Reid's show advocating for gun control. This is not a obscure new person to the media. But after a lot of backlash, they did a minor change and I don't think you're gonna find it that much better to be honest. So the current version on the site says this. While it's been reported that the activist was involved in the Black Lives Matter and gun safety movements, and there has been no indication yet that he has ties to any right-wing organizations, the shooting comes amid a rise in threats against politicians fueled by increasingly violent rhetoric coming from extremist Republicans. They're still basically saying the same thing. It's absolutely insane. And just for good measure, let's finish it out with this paragraph from them. Given that the GOP has largely fueled this problem, it holds the lion's share of the responsibility for addressing it. Republicans must condemn in the strongest terms any member of their party who promotes or suggests political violence. That includes sitting members of the House and Senate, ex-presidents, and other top leaders. This is for a shooting committed by a pan-African socialist Black Lives Matter organizing gun control advocate. These people are nuts. They're crazy. They're crazy. Anyways, folks, that's the end of the video. Did you learn anything? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Social media links are in the description box below. As well as merch, support us at nuancebro.com join. It really helps out the channel, and I'll see you next time, bro.